By this point in this course, you have been made familiar with using functions, uh, collections, iterators, and a lot more such as enumerations and structures. Let's talk about optionals now, because as you saw in the previous uh, section of the video where we talked about iterators, we actually did come across optionals stated as option data type in Rust. So it was quite awkward not to talk about them. Let's talk about optionals in this section of the video. Optionals or option in Rust can either be a value or be none. And either being a value is specified as the value of some and, and not having a value specified as a value of none. So if you have a value that can have, if you have a variable that can have a, ver a value or have no value at all, it can be best specified as an optional or option data type in Rust. So the way you can create an optional in Rust is uh, either you use, for instance, the value of some, or you create an option of none. So let's, for instance, go ahead and say in here, let's value, uh, and you would say some, okay? And then in here, you could say some, 10, for instance, okay? And this value, now you can see, is an option of that value. And then you can say, uh, let name is uh, uh, none in here. And then actually, we, we should say, we should specify the data type for it. So we say this is an option, uh, as an option of a string slice, okay? And it is none. So option, we can look at its source code. Actually, you can see option is a, an enumeration. So it has either the case of none or some. So now it is clear for you why we're using this syntax as we've already looked at enumerations and how to use them. Now, uh, let's let's have a name in here. So we can see it's an option, um, actually option of str and none in here. Comparison operator, uh, we can see uh, of our option. Actually, let's let's specify this in here. We say this is an option of string slice. This, and we say this is equal to none, like this. Okay, and you can see now we have an option of uh, string slice. Now you can unwrap your uh, val optional values safely. So wherever you see the data type of option, you can unwrap its value. That it's possible value in it using a match statement. So you can say match name. And in here, you would say uh, some, OK? And, and then you would say, for instance, name, and then say uh, print ln, hello name. And in the case of none, you can say print ln, uh, there is no name, OK? Just like that. So you can then run this code. And then you look at your terminal and says there is no name because name is none. Or you could say uh, John go, and then you will see uh, unexpected. Oh, because it has to be some. Okay. And if you place John Doe in here, you can see the value of hello John Doe being printed to the console. So this is how you would safely unwrap the values of an optional in Rust. Now, if you want to unsafely unwrap the value of an optional, you could go ahead and say name in here, and you would expect a value from it. This, func this is a function that you specify on that you call on your optional values of type option. And we say, uh, let uh, unwrapped name, for instance, is name expect. And here you specify uh, a error message to be printed to the screen if this name is none. So uh, we say print ln, name is uh, an unwrapped name, OK, in here. And then you can now go to your terminal and have a look. It says name is John Doe. But if in here we had the value of none, you can see then we get a panic on the screen that says name was not provided. So that's what expect is doing in here. Now, you can also force unwrap optionals. And that is pretty much you're just saying that I want this value to be there, and I'm not even expecting it. So you just say unwrap. OK, and this doesn't even print any specific message to the console if the value doesn't exist. This just panics, as you can see, it says called it uh, with no value on it. But if, did have, if it did have a value, such as Peter, for instance, then you would get that value directly printed to the screen, as you can see, as a string slice, OK? Now, if you have an optional, uh, if you have an optional value uh, and you want to mutate it, such as, for instance, age in here, say age is a mutating optional value that contains an i32 with a value of, for instance, 20 or i8 even, you can basically mutate that value, and you could say match age as a mut, as a mutable, okay? And then you say in the case of uh, sum, 
you get the age and you can see your age is a reference to a mutable i8 and then you basically add one to it or you can add 10 to it for instance and in the case of none you just say no age all right and in the case of none you, you don't actually have to do anything you could just have this uh, statement in here okay so we can have a look at the console I actually haven't printed anything let's print it uh, age is and then we print the age to the console now we should uh, unwrap and now we should see the value of 30 being printed to the screen. So if you want to grab the mutable ver um, the value inside a mutable optional, you do it with asmoth, and then you can match against that, all right? Now, if you have multiple mutable, uh, multiple optionals, such as age one, two, three, for instance, you could say age one, age two, and three. Uh, and then if you want to unwrap their values all at the same time, and if they all have a value, you want to... Uh, for instance, uh, execute some pieces of code, then you can use this uh, statement. You say, if let sum age one, for instance, and then sum age two, and then sum age three, equal to age one, age two, age three, then you execute some code in here. And then you can see age one and two and three are variables then that are gonna be available within this context, okay? So we can then look at the terminal and the value of and 90 is only printed to the screen actually because we're plussing it, I can see in here. Let's say age one, age two, and age three. And we say, uh, we separate them like this, okay? So now you can see all the values being printed to the screen. So you can use this syntax if you wanna unwrap multiple options at the same time. Now, if you want to unwrap an optional, and if that optional doesn't have a value, you want to get a default value out of it, then you can use the unwrap or function. So let's say age, we say let, uh, sorry, name is an option of uh, a string slice, okay? And is equal to none. And then we say let unwrapped is name, unwrap or, uh, and then in here we say world, okay, or John Doe. Uh, John go and then print ln name is and then we put the name in here and if you look at the terminal uh, actually see unwrapped if you look at the terminal you can see it says name is John Doe because name was none but we unwrapped it with this value if it didn't exist however if this was sum of Jane Doe then Jane Doe would be used instead of John Doe as you can see because it was it didn't actually go to the or statement part of this function okay now, you can also use a function to unwrap a value. So you can say unwrap, unwrap or else in here, okay? And this function doesn't take any values in here. And then you could do some work in here, do some work, and then return some value in here. So uh, John Doe, for instance, okay? And you can see it will do the same effect as the unwrap uh, or function for you. However, this allows you to actually execute a lot more code than just returning a value. So you could do, for instance, some work in here, write into some file or something, okay? Now, you can also see uh, whether an optional has a value or not just by with a Boolean, uh, so getting a Boolean out of it. So you can say uh, name uh, is sum, basically means does it have a value, okay? So you say if name is sum, print ln, there is a value. Else we could say there is no value. And in this case, it's gonna say there is no value, okay? So this is is sum, or you could say is none, meaning that there is no value in this optional. So you can do that too. And also for some variables such as strings or integers get a default value. So let's say age is an option of i32, for instance. And actually, I, as an option of i32, and it's equal to none. And you can say, let's, uh, let's age is age um, unwrap or default. And then you can print this age to the console. You will now see the value of zero being printed to the console. So that means that if this value is present, meaning that it's a sum of something, then that value will be returned into this age. However, if it is none, then the default value of I32 will be used. And there, there is a default value for, for I32 in the standard library, which is set to zero. And this works also for strings and some other data types as well, such as floating points, okay? You can also map an uh, option. So let's say in this case, we say lay age mol 
multiply by two and you could say age and then you map it and then you say uh, age, age multiplied by two if it exists, okay? And then we say age multiplied by two, we print it to the screen here, uh, unwrap or default. In this case, it's gonna give us a zero, as you can see in terminal. Uh, but if this did have a value of some 20, for instance, then 20 will be multiplied by two and prints it to the console in here. Now, functions can also return an option as well. So since option is a data type of a, of an, of a type, but basically enumeration, they can also be returned from a function. So you can just return an option from a function as you would return any other data type, such as an integer or a string. Uh, now, options and optionals in Rust are used interchangeably, meaning that their names can be used interchangeably, uh, but they mean the same thing. So this was just a quick intro to optionals in Rust. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.